to work. Um, oh, well, thank you, Debbie. Got it. Um, and after that, then we'll, I'll ask you if you have. How long can she hold herself like that? <laughs> Had you guys learned this? You were froze. Oh, I didn't see you guys not move. Um, I don't know why this book, beginner's book, has this honey part in here. They should have just did a, a, a cut and dry. This is what you do, but they went into it. Oh, I mean, like I learned stuff. And um, so it's more like an intermediate. So bear with me. Uh, some of it doesn't make sense, and I just I'll just read it, and then we'll go from there. So. Bully. Can you hear it? No. Okay. How did we do that last night, Debbie, or night before last? You get it started on your computer, and then go to screen share. And it's not doing anything. You didn't go to screen share yet. Oh, new screen share. Okay, well, there it is. Oh, down here. Share yeah. sound. It's gotcha. Thank you, Deb. Bethany found that for us the other day. Can you can you hear it now? Did you hear it? No. You need to put us on screen share. Oh, it is screen share. New screen share. Share sound. <clears throat> Well, I may not be given this presentation. All right. So the green arrow down in, well, mine's on the bottom in the middle of the screen. Uh huh. The green arrow pointing up. Do you see it now? Nope. Well, huh. Well, when I touch it, it uh, just wants to move my whole menu. Uh, is it up there now? Yeah. Well, I don't know what to do. I mean, I've done it this way the whole time, and it's always worked. So, so when you say, I mean, I, I can, well, I don't see it now. I see, I see you, but it, but it was up on the screen. And if you just click start presentation, it should start like start slideshow from beginning. Yeah, but you should see my, my, my screen now. Is it there? Well, I do. I so, so I see two things of honey and watch on YouTube and, yeah. and it's ready for you to click. Yeah. I don't yeah. have it. I got my people. No, I see the honey and, and uh, <laughs> YouTube icon. Yeah. Maybe yours is in gallery, Debbie, and you don't have me or... Can you hear that? It is the product of one of the most now intelligent and industrious I hear of creatures. It, but I okay, Debbie, it. yours is probably the way that you're viewing Zoom. All right. Let's start all over. It is the product of one of the most intelligent and industrious of creatures, whose miniature society is one of the most sophisticated in the animal kingdom. It's been used in religious and pagan celebrations, and its medicinal qualities have been known for centuries. It all begins in a field where worker honeybees suck nectar from flower blossoms, such as clover. They store it in their honey sack, then return to the hive where other worker bees suck it out and chew it, breaking down the nectar's complex sugars into two simple sugars called glucose and fructose. The bees then deposit the nectar into the cells of the wax honeycombs they've built. They fan it with their wings until most of the water content evaporates in the warm air of the beehive. What's left is thick and gooey honey. The bees then cap each honey-filled cell with beeswax. 
That's when the beekeeper steps in. Bees will sting if taken by surprise, so the beekeeper sprays the hive with smoke from burning pine needles, a scented warning that foreigners are about to enter the hive. Inside the hive are wooden frames hanging side by side, each holding a honeycomb. A hive can house hundreds of thousands of bees, all descendants of the prolific queen bee. The queen bee lays up to 2,000 eggs per day, creating the workforce needed to feed and protect the colony. But the beekeeper tricks the colony's defenders. He replaces the hive's cover with a device called a bee escape, which smells like cherries. Bees dislike the scent, so most fly to the bottom sections of the hive. Another warning spray, and the beekeeper removes the bee oh, escape. Sorry. Playing with my computer. Now, he can escape with the sorry, honeycombs. <laughs> Inside the honey factory, they put the honeycomb frames on what's called an uncapping machine. Like a razor, it shaves off the wax caps of the honey-filled cells of the combs. They scrape off the remains manually. Then they set the frames on another machine called a honey extractor. It spins the honeycombs until all the honey is forced out of the cells. Afterwards, they filter the honey to remove any pieces of wax that have slipped through. Then the honey is ready for bottling. Some beehives contain smaller frames designed to produce honey that isn't extracted from the honeycomb. Workers remove the frame and cut the honeycomb into pieces with a heated knife. This seals the wax around the honey inside. This wax is edible. The beeswax lining of the honeycomb goes to make candles, furniture polish and lipsticks. When producers have more liquid honey than they can sell, they simply let it granulate, where it develops sugar crystals that turn hard and white. Then when orders come in, they return it to its original liquid form by heating it to 130 degrees Fahrenheit. The jars are vacuum cleaned, then filled. One beehive can yield over three kilograms of honey in a single day. That's much more than the bees need for themselves. The surplus is what we end up eating. Honey production today is both efficient and humane. For centuries, the only way to harvest honey from hives had been to kill the bees. Then in 1851, an American beekeeper invented a way to get the honey, yet spare the bees. His method, with the removable honeycomb frames, is the one we still use today. Oh no! It is the product of one of the most int- Well, there we go. All right. Let me put you guys up here. <clears throat> okay. So, was that not a cool video? It was. Yeah, I'm glad it worked. I'm glad it worked. We're getting so good at this. <laughs> so, all right. So, this is another interesting fact that this little vial has uh, one twelfth of a teaspoon. And this is how much honey one worker bee will produce in its entire lifetime. So that's pretty amazing in that. Um, not really sure if I totally believe that or not, but <laughs> kind of hard to hard, kind of hard to swallow. But um, all right, I need to put you guys away. Okay, so does anybody have any questions before we get started? All right.
like I said, this is a long process. And um, if you guys want to talk through this, then that's fine. Just say, hey, and then I'll shut up and you can ask your questions or whatever. It's that long. So um, honey is marketed in five basic forms. You have your section comb. And these are the uh, uh, hog square and the, the Ross rounds. And that's how you sell that. So it's kind of an expensive way to sell this beautiful um, combed honey. And that's that's how I sell mine in, in a cut comb. And it's ch cheap and easy. Doesn't only, didn't even take me, I didn't even buy my thing. It was given to me, my cutter. So, um, and you can cut them like they did with a knife. So that's a you know one expense you don't have to pay. And this is um, chunk or uh, chunk honey, and that's just honey. Like she she was cutting those single slices, and you just put it in a jar, and you you pour your honey on on top of it, and you can sell it for a good bit of money. Um, that's your cream honey, and I right here is mine, and. Um, I can't see I've got and then this is I put chocolate in mine so it's really good um like I said Bethany taught me how to do that and then this is my um this is my clarifying vat and it comes out of my spinner which I think nope I thought I thought I had uh, a, my spinner on here but it comes out of there and the wax and stuff goes in this first vat and then it, it fills up and goes over um, the, um, the these bars right here and goes into here. So it's pretty well clean. And then when it gets into this one, and then when it gets into this one, then it goes into my tank. So it's it's amazing. We just bought it last year. It's too small. It, it really chokes me down. So um, yeah, I, I like it, but I don't like it. It's not big enough. So, but anyway, um, here we go. This is the Ross Rounds and the, the Hog. What are they called? Debbie Hog? Something. I don't hog. know. I don't remember. Yeah. yeah it's hog uh, half homes. What is it? Hog half homes. That's what I have on mine. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I've never used those and probably never will. I have been given, now Debbie has some too, and I think if our bees get big enough that uh, we want to use them this year, the Ross Rounds, I was given of that. So, but all right. So let me put me out of sight so I don't see myself. And um, this is section combed honey um, is produced and sold in a comb in either a small wooden which those are the dimensions or round plastic sections. Comb honey producers practice two basic systems um, of spring management, depending on the size of brood chambers used. These two systems, of course, have a number of management options. And here they are. This is the Ross round. And uh, the simplest method of producing comb honey is to winter the bees. And this is what's really threw me for a loop in one and a half story brood chamber and that's how they go into winter and that's how they're going to build up in the spring and the reason they do that is just because they which i've figured this out after going over and over it in my head they do that to um so they don't have to take time and do a deep like mine like I'm still waiting uh, if i had a, a medium on them they would probably have you know plenty of, of brood laid and, and everything and resources. A second shallow box may be added about the time maples or fruit trees are in bloom in the spring flow is heavy. And when the main nectar flow has started, place the queen in a full deep uh, and full depth hive body and insert a queen excluder below the shallow super. And uh, yeah, and uh, when the bees have stored honey and all but the two outer frames of the shallow super, the colony is ready for a, a section super. And now this is where this is what I learned because I always saw videos where they place them on top and place the section super below the queen excluder. So that would be your deep, your medium, and then your section super, and then your excluder. 
Um, queens seldom lay eggs, eggs in the sex section. Do what? Nothing? Okay. Um, now, where was I? Uh, queens seldom lay eggs in the section super. Uh, or in the section since the, the space is divided into small compartments. So I've seen them lay everywhere. Uh, so maybe these people's queens are just amazing. Um, an excluder placed below a section super sometimes retards the, the work of the bees in the sections, but it does not seem to retard workers uh, work in supers, especially if the bees are already working in them. Sorry, I'm ahead of you. And um, the honey, the brood, or the honey and the brood in the, in the shallow supers encourage encourage the bees to work in the section super quickly, since they are already accustomed to going into the super above. Add an additional additional section super as soon as the bees have begun to work in the outside rows of the section sections in the last super added, and that just I'm just putting this out there and then if you guys want to learn it, then you need to go step by step in your book. It's about the only thing that I came came out of this. <laughs> just go to your book. But these are the different supers. Um, shallows. I know some people still use those. Not very many. Most of most everybody either goes a medium or a deep. All right. Um, Let's see. Placing empty section supers above those particularly filled supers keeps the workers more organized. Workers do more <clears throat> complete job of filling and sealing the sections as they work upon uh, into the empty super. And alternatively, you may raise the first super when it is half sealed and place a partially drawn super underneath. And that's called underneath supering. So the manipulation of supers reduce the risk, risk of travel stain on the section caps and cappings from the uh, there. Nope. I think I just added more. Um, when supers are added too quickly, they may contain partially filled sections with little or no market value. And skillful production of comb honey takes practice in good nectar flows. All right. Uh oh. <laughs> Lost my place. So, anyway, this is uh, two full deep brood chambers, and the uh, double brood chamber. Uh, additional space for brood rearing is generally not needed uh, unless there is very heavy ne nectar flow. Bees will not fill section combs successfully when the section supers are placed above two hive bodies. They are more likely to fill the two brood. Chambers and then swarm. Yep. You froze. Brood chamber is. You can de determine the beginning of the flow by the presence of uh, new white wax on the combs and on the top of the, the bars of the brood frames. That's what we call burr comb. And new nectar that flows, uh, that falls out easily when shaken, will also be in the brood chambers. So, you guys, give me a minute because it did not print out what I wanted to print out. So here we go. All right, now this is how they, they do it. Uh, place a queen in a lower hive body with five frames of sealed brood and five empty combs when you reduce uh, two-story colonies to a single story. And we don't do it like this, but I think I am going to try it just to see um, it, it makes sense. But we've always left them honey and pollen in there, and they're saying that they don't need that. So give them drawn comb, and that gives her more places to lay, which makes sense. Place the remaining combs in the empty hive body after shaking about two-thirds of the bees from them 
in front of the lower hive body. And that instead of shaking it on there, they're putting it in the front of the box. Um, give a colony one or two section supers, depending on each strength. You may set the second hive body on a weak colony or use it to develop a new colony. So share the love. All right, now this is a little bit of baiting and this isn't a baiting. Um, I just saw this picture and it's like, oh, okay. Now this, this is my cut comb frame. And you can see in the center, I am, I'm pointing with my finger <laughs> right here. That's foundation. And right here is comb, fresh wax comb that they, ma they made. <clears throat> and I'll pull this and I'll take my cutter and I'll cut two sections here and two sections here. And then that's my cut home comb. That's hard to say cut comb honey to sell. And it's very easy and we have touched base on it. But if you want to know how to make these, just let, let me know and I'll, I'll tell you at the end. But to bait a section super with a partially drawn section, save the previous previous C or what they do. I'll explain it is the ones that they said earlier that didn't get um, filled out, then they put pull those, put them in the freezer, and that's what they bait with the following year. So they're they're planning ahead. Uh, yeah, I don't do that well. When using bait sections, place four of them in the center row of sections. Bait sections used in the initial super are often poor in quality when filled. Uh, yeah, when filled and should not go to market. When bees are well started in the outermost sections of the super and there is reason to expect the nectar flow to continue at another super and it says do not give room before the bees need it add more supers uh, ju judiciously toward the end of the nectar flow otherwise many sections will be started that will not be finished in uh, sellable condition place the empty super above the partially filled one as described previously, bees will then finish the sections as they move up. They, I told you it was a big one. Um, now this one, uh, it's just a pretty picture. This is, now I will, I will show you this as we go along through here, but I use a root fractometer and that's what this is. And there it is. And, um, I had this on display Saturday when we were selling our honey and a lot of people got a kick out of it. But if a lot of people say, if you see a, a frame like this in your hive, <clears throat> well, one, it, it is a very poor frame because it should be pulled out thicker. So, you know, I would still spin this out. Um, but I would take my hive tool or a knife or something. And there I am pointing with my finger again. I don't know why you guys can't see where I'm pointing. I would dip here and I would dip here and I would dip here and I would put it all on this and I would dab it right there and mix it together. And then I would shut that. And then I would look up at the sun and see if it's 17 or below in moisture content. And if it is, then I pull that and I put that in ready to you know bring it into the shed to spin it out but if it's in the 20s then I put it back in and I would put it um, like the middle ones would, will be done so I'll pull those so I would pull that one into the middle and then they will cure it and then I can pull that next time if that does so and I've got so much junk up here I cannot there we go all right um when a section super is completely sealed from top to bottom, except for the two outer rows, remove it and place it above the bee escape. And that's enough. I didn't bring a bee escape, but I can explain to you. I think a lot of you know what a bee escape is, and they have pros and cons with that. Um, well, when they don't, they kill a lot of bees. Uh, do not remove sections with smoke because the bees will chew tiny holes through the cappings during smoking, uh, producing leaky sections. In addition, the honey may absorb the flavor of the smoke and become distasteful. Use unfinished sections from the outside of rows as bait sections. This is what they were saying before in the next super. 
um, when they are given uh, to the bees. When the flow is about over, remove the sections and store them in the freezer for the next season. To determine and their season, they might be saying like the next season means the next flow, not the next year. So to determine when a section super is full, look at the bottoms of the sections since these are the last parts to be sealed. So you would pop it up and look in there and then you know because a lot of they're they're you know squashed side by side and you can't really see them unless you pull them apart um to do, let's see if nectar is coming in fast adding the super every few days is advisable oh, where are you at there we go see down in the bottom those are those hog rounds or hog <laughs> hog hog comb or whatever and then the top ones are the, the Ross rounds and see how tight they are in there so that's why you do that uh, let's see just as important as adding supers at the opportune time is their removal in a timely fashion and I agree with this because we left ours on when we were many years ago and luckily you know we're okay with it we're not trying to pay our bills or anything by that then we are now but um they went through a dearth and we didn't know it so but they had that honey to live on which they came out wonderfully so you know pros and cons of doing that just whew, glad you know it helped save their lives and it worked out really good but we didn't get any honey that day, that season so um if a finished super is left on the hive too long uh, after the combs are sealed, cavities will become dirty or travel stained. They may, um, cons uh, yeah, I just said that, they may consume them all. Um, five to eight days after required or are required to ripen nectar, all honey should be ripe 12 days after the flow stops. So think about that, put that on your, you can just go and test it, you know, the bees don't care. So examine the brood areas of all colonies produce producing uh, comb honey for queen cells every eight to 10 days for the duration of the swarming season. And that, that would get pretty heavy if, um, you know, like sometimes mine are, are four deeps high and I don't do that. Yeah, yeah, you're supposed to, but I can't, I can't go through all those. Um, destroy, if you do find them, you destroy all the queen cells, if any, uh, cells are are missed the colony may swarm so section boxes uh, for producing comb honey should be folded fi filled with foundation and placed in supers only shortly before you use them um, it made if made too far in advance they may be less attractive to the bees and uh, they can swarm so everything they can swarm they can swarm the boxes will then will then be ready for immediate use during the nectar flow. When folding, uh, when folding the wooden section boxes, moisten all grooves with a damp sponge, rag, or fine spray of water or steam to prevent breaking all the corners. And this is all new to me. So if you guys have used this stuff, then you can elaborate you know, later. But you know, I didn't know you had to fold them up and, and all that kind of stuff. So this is the, the top wax, there I am with my finger again. The top wax, this, you cannot use that in any edible um, chunk wax or anything like that. But this wax down here, it has no wires in it and it's, it's supposed to be really high quality wax and you can eat that and that, that's what helps them pull it out. And that's what you can cut your knife through. Sheets of thin surplus foundations are the same length and depth as the, the four sections and they are positioned in the middle of the boxes. Split wooden sections and plastic sections assemble faster than solid section boxes. Place four folded sections with this uh, spider in the section holder and spread the tops of all four sections or spread the tops of all four sections drop the sheet of foundation into the space left between the two halves of the four sections and push the sections together to hold the foundations tight devices for putting foundation in split sections are available 
from bee supply feelers. Comb honey is more attractive and more economically produced when you use full sheets. an eighth inch smaller each way than the inside of the section. Prepare four or eight blocks. Uh, says my internet, I see movement from you guys, so I guess I'm okay. Um, let's see, and then eight inch smaller than the inside of the section. Blocks should be an eighth inch thinner than a half the depth of the section, which this has, makes me go crazy. So you would just have to sit with the book and, and go place by place. Place the sections over the blocks and lay one sheet of foundation on each block. And then you just slide it down. So there, that's the cutter that I use. On that frame that I've showed you before, I just take that and I measure it in there and, and cut it and then cut it and it's beautiful. Then you, I just put it on wire and let it drain a little bit. And then you're supposed to put it in the freezer to kill any little live things that's crawling in there. And then you get out and, and uh, some of them I added honey to and some of them I didn't. Um, this says to slide a, a hot blade <clears throat> between the section and the foundation. Piss the foundation against the hot blade as you withdraw the blade. The metal edge of the foundation will slide against the section and adhere as it cools and it kind of, um, it, um, it, it seals it, the, the hot blade, which I will probably try to, to heat that this year and see if I, I lose less um, honey that way. Uh, the foundation should then hang free from, uh, am I right? No, yeah, all right. The foundation should not rest on the bottom because it stretches a little when placed. I think I missed some, insert the section. I don't know where I'm at, guys, but anyway, you can read it real quick. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, if it reaches the bottom, it may buckle and distort the resulting comb. Do not place the sections in supers until they are needed. One or two poorly fastened sheets of foundation falling down in the super after it has been stored or given to the bees may cause considerable loss and inconvenience um, after the super has been filled by the bees. Uh, paint the tops uh, of your, your frames where the split goes down in of, of solid section with melted, and this in your book says paraffin wax, and please don't use paraffin wax in your beehives. It's full of chemicals. So if you have a little bit of wax, or if you don't, then take one of your sheets that you're using and you know melt it and then brush it on to uh, to seal it and um, so they won't or you can use masking tape so the bees cannot stain the sections um all right cut comb honey it is much easier to produce than section comb honey since you do not have to crowd the bees to force them to work in the section supers and fill the super fill a shallow super with frames of thin foundation fastening the foundation at the top of the wedge of the wedge type top bar or with a bead of wax and that's how I do mine um, to a actually I have it in a groove and then I seal it with melted wax in a groove top bar Spe um, special thin top bar frames are sold just for cut comb honey but they are not required place the supers on the hive over a queen excluder and that's if they're not foundation only if they're pulled you know something for them to pull out. Um, let's see, uh, to prevent the brood for, uh, producing in them. When a super is sealed and removed from the bees, cut the comb out of the frame, divide into two pieces of the desired size and let them drain overnight on a wire. And I don't know why you would have to let them drain because you're gonna fill it up with honey. So as soon as you cut it, you could go ahead and put it in your jars and fill it with honey. That didn't make any sense to me when, when I was looking at that. But here's some things that you guys can try. And you have to have a big, big hive to begin with. And it's just these jars, you just fit it. You can do a, a large mouth or you can do a um, small mouth. And 
So like these down here, that's a small mouth. That's a uh, two pounder probably, or maybe a one pounder. But they go up there and here they, um, they made that, cut that and put it in there. And with mine, I, I put a little drips of wax up here and they just went right up to it and started uh, filling up my jar and it was beautiful. And it looked like this, it didn't look like that. Um, this is where you, it's adhered to the side, but mine was like that. It started from the top and it went all the way down the bottom. And they said that you can, if you take it to market or whatever, you back many years ago, they were getting $30 per quart out of these. For probably 28. My internet connection is unstable again. We're almost How through, guys. How do you get the beads out? Uh, they, um, you put it on an escape. And they, when it's done, then they just basically leave it alone. And then you can open, turn it up and they fly out. Yeah. Phyllis, have you ever had any issues with the humidity, not dry, the honey in those jars, not drying out as quickly as it should? Oh, in, in these jars? Yeah. No, they have to be basically, uh, totally basically all capped you have to really look at it and uh no we we've only did it one time and um then it, i mean it it's it's a lot and i mean do you think that it takes longer for them to get it capped in the jars like does it not dry out as quickly as it would on a frame mm, I, no I, I, it was it went pretty quick okay yeah yeah and you could try one you know just see yeah. how they do and and just to get your feet wet but um it just doesn't seem like the air would i guess the bees would ventilate it themselves but it just seems like yeah. it would be more sealed up yeah they definitely it, it is all capped mm -hmm. and uh, there are you know there was some open and if you had a refractometer then um you know you could always stick a test it yeah, yeah and see what uh, moisture it is do you but take you the lid off do what do you take the lid off while they're filling it? Oh yeah, yeah. It's it. These are these are these ones right here. Right. Yeah. No lid, and I don't know why. I guess he has the lid on there for some. Oh, I know why. The lid is on there, but the metal, the center one is not. Okay. The cap, yeah. Yeah. That's right. It's a mason jar. Okay. Yep. It's a mason jar yeah all right did i no all right most beekeepers produce um extracted honey management of the bees is simpler and most consumers seem to prefer liquid honey um and there's cutting i think uh uh yeah, Terry was talking about get, doing a demonstration with that. And that's a hot knife and I hate them. I always burn myself. And when I used to cut, cut them off, the cappings off, then I got a, a real long charade. Thank you. I never know that word. Charaded, charaded uh, knife. I mean, great big old, like a bone handle, but it's plastic. And I, the the horse wrap for their, you know, if they get hurt, you know, we use it in on our dogs and whatever, but it, it sticks to itself. So, so I took horse wrap around my handle and it, so it gave me a grip and I, it just cuts right, you know, so much better with me, but you know, Rick, he uses, used the knife, the hot knife, and um, he did very well with it, but um, yeah, not, not Game me. Cayman Reynolds did a great demo on it where he cuts the top first and then goes down. It was mm -hmm. really interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, I have one for sale. If you no, no, I I, <laughs> no, I'm just saying I, I, will, I, I hate them. I don't like them. But to each his own. I have a little hand and uh, the handle's big. Um, but yeah. Um, Let's see. Yeah. In, in addition, if you decide to produce cream or chunk honey, you need liquid honey. So you always have to start with liquid honey. And there's a, a fork 
like if if it's below the surface, uh, it's like I don't know some your knife will only cut on flat surface, so it leaves some left behind. So you have to use this this fork, and you have to you know open up this so they can drain. So and then there's your spinner. That's a nice clean spinner. Yeah. So let's see. Bees. Oh, okay. This is all messed up. Bees will produce more ex extractable honey than they will honey in a comb. Extracted honey is more economical to produce since combs used for extracted honey um, can be reused season after season after season. Uh, production of, of harvestable amounts of extra uh, honey and supers of drawn comb or foundation can be added as needed. Oh, there you go. That's how I strain mine. And I brought my strainer. And it's got speakers in it. Sorry, it wouldn't help me carry up. The, but this is my strainer. I don't know if you guys can see it. There you go. And it pops out. And usually, they ha this has a big um, filter or wire basket on it. And I cut mine off. So it's up in there. You can fill the the wire and then but this one comes with it also and this is all i use unless it's really 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 um fine i don't know whatever minerals that they have in there then sometimes i'll use a um, a painter's um uh i have filter bag and i'll lay it in there because some of it is just too much to sell to the public. Me, I don't care what's in my honey because I know it's not going to hurt me. But for presentations and for the public, I have to to do so, like I don't know if you guys have ever extracted honey, the ones that have have done this and then the sediment is on top. Well, sometimes that sediment will not float on top because it's so full and it stays in your honey and I can't sell that to people. Now, a lot now at the ramp festival, I could have sold it to everybody because they were all like earthy granola -ish, and they was like, yeah, you know, give me the minerals. That's great. But when you sell into town and stuff, they want it just like the store bought. So, all right. I think I'm done on that one. All right. One more guys. I think this is the end. So, yeah, most beekeepers produce um, extracted honey. Management of the bees is simpler and most consumers, I uh, already read that. Yes. All things being equal, bees will, already read that. Extracted honey, already read that. All right. So <laughs> um, I'll just come down here. Extracted honey supers are added above the existing brood area of the colony, colony using a queen excluder or not. It's your preference. Um, you should add excess super space, space, super space to colonies early in the season, which is over supening to maximize honey storage. Now, they said earlier to not give them too much space. And now they're saying to over, you know, to add super. So I think it's when you know the flow's going, uh, Michael Palmer adds two at a time, two at a time. And that way, you know, he has hardly any swarms at all. Some be, be preferred to under super as the nectar flow slows. Um, to ensure a honey crop from single floor sor sources, previously filled supers need to be removed and colonies re-supered at the beginning of the nectar flow of the desired source. So if you want basswood, then I would remove every, I know basswood's coming in. I can, you know, I really can't smell basswood, but um, say autumn olive. So early in the spring, I have the dandelions, I have the nettle weed, whatever going on. And, but autumn olive hit. So I take all those supers off and I store them, whatever, or I put them on somebody else's hive, you know, that needs it, can, can maintain it. And then I put on empty supers and then I know that those are autumn olive and I can label them autumn olive. And that's how you, how you get specialty crops. Um, yep, that's it. So thank you. Thank you for being with me. <laughs> um, all right, stop sharing.
So very good. Phyllis? The mouthful. Yeah, that's this is exactly oh. like I showed you guys, but mine was a deep and um I sent Kathy all the info and and she's she's banging it in. So good job. Now on the bottom where this is this is really fine. This is th that uh, that wax that you can buy that's expensive. It's pure wax right. that you make candles out of. And this is just foundation. And they've already yeah. in one of my boxes, they've already filled both sides. Yeah, in one week they the, they will do that and then they can fill it in the next week. But I took popsicle sticks, turn that upside down again. I took popsicle sticks right where her wax is because I didn't want any wax in mine. I wanted mine 100 percent natural. And I put um um wax you know just just covered those popsicle sticks with wax oh, okay. and then yeah and then they just they went to town and i put them in one week and shanda came and inspected me and we were just both astonished it was like because i wrote on the date that i put them in and she was like oh my gosh this was one yeah. week and they they were deeps so in, in, in like uh eight days i pulled it up and it was you could just i said oh i forgot i put that in there yeah yeah and we we saw some today and they use them as drone um frames because they you know when when they make mine they make them drone set the drone size and yes. so we left them in there all winter and now they're full of drones for breeding purposes so yep it's a two-in-one thing but um but here's my creamed honey oh it looks so good yeah and it's, i took one of these to the ramp festival and i did i brought maybe back um an eighth of a spoonful and um because it was my tester and this is my chocolate that bethany told me and i just put and it you can see it it has little chocolate chocolate uh, crystals everything's backwards there so i can see a little bit of cocoa in there that didn't so but i guess you would just i just eat it but you could stir it around so but uh, does anybody have any questions about it was a mouthful I, I, I have something um so when you were talking about um so separating your supers to get specific um, brands of honey Flo. uh, mm -hmm. it flows so can you explain that again what you do okay so if you know um i was trying to think of something that smells um I get, golden oh rod. goldenrod smells well, goldenrod's okay. at the end so you're you know you know you're gonna yeah. be ready for goldenrod but autumn olive really smells and you know what that is right the autumn yeah. olive branch it's the, everywhere. The bush. Okay, I have to look it up. <laughs> okay, well, right now it's green with, and it's like a white, touched in white. It looks. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, I think I know. Yep. They're on the sides of the roads. They're everywhere. Ready to okay. open, and um, so they're along the the interstate mostly, and along side roads and the fences. They're very. Um, they're very uh, invasive. So, but so you, you start smelling that and you know that the mm. flow is coming, right? So anything that you have on your hive in supers, then you have to remove those supers and then put empty supers on that hive. If it's mm -hmm. big enough, then they'll bring that in. And then you know when it's full and you can mark that, that it, that is Automala. I wondered how people did it. Like, I mean, I actually don't like buckwheat, but you see like buckwheat. I thought yeah. maybe they put it in different fields or something. <laughs> well, they do that. Yeah, okay. that. That's exactly what they do. They yeah. they move it to the buckwheat field yeah. and they and have, have empty supers yeah. okay. on. Yep, that's exactly what they do. Yeah. That's a good question. Yeah. It's I have one more comment. So when you were talking about so 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 separating, we're not separating honey, like filtering it. Mm -hmm. And you were talking about so 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 if you get um, some like minerals in it or sediment, mm -hmm. um, is that like that? That's not the bubbles. That's like kind of the white stuff. 
<laughs> no, that's um, that's air bubbles and and real real fine wax. You can take your finger and wipe across there and go like this and, and taste it, and it's wax in your mouth. Okay. So, yeah. Um, know that the sediments are. I don't know what it is, but you can look in my holding tank, mm -hmm. and it's just I I can pull it off, and it's like looks like propolis and wax and minerals and you know it, it doesn't taste bad but they're grainy like sand it, does it make like okay it makes it grainy, so it doesn't make the honey cloudy it yeah, makes it, it green oh that makes it cloudy yeah it probably would make it cloudy um but all of that that's why we one reason we we put it in a holding tank and because all the and you can do it with a five gallon well you can do it with a quart jar if you know you just pour your your honey in there and if it has wax in it it all comes to the top and then you just take your your spoon and you know get that out and then throw it outside for the bees and let them clean it up so 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 how long do you keep it i mean i mean i'm like small scale and i, I made that sure. mistake i i filtered and borrowed at the same time and, and i think i got like you know air bulbs how long do you hold it you know in a five gallon bucket or two five gallon buckets just i mean a day a week you know, um, I have basswood down there that I've had for three years. So just because okay, I so don't, I don't just sell. I have one woman, and then I have a friend down the road, and he makes mead and he uses basswood, and um, so I save it for them. And I have one woman in Elkins that buys about two hundred dollars worth every year, and that's the only thing that her stomach will let her use is basswood. Not the real light, real white. Very honey. sweet very sweet yeah and mine because i i had seven five gallon buckets because we're trying you know we had to it was all set up so we we put ours in a uh, cooler with a horse uh, water heater and it gets to about 100 degrees and it sits in there for probably about three or four days. And then we strain it through through this strainer to get the wax out of it. And then we pour it in our vat. And that's what we've been doing ever since we got home because we knew, you know, we were going to the festival last weekend. And so we had, you know, so I, I cleaned all those yesterday and got them out of my house. And now they're they're on my porch drying. Well, they are dry. I just haven't, we, we did bees today. So yeah. So um, it lasts for a long time, and mine has a mint in it, so it's got good flavor. I have a, a big patch of mint, and it's you can tell taste it after you swallow it. You can taste the the mint in it. Awesome. But that there, it's also called a a, a linen tree. Linen. That's what the old people used to call it instead of basswood. So is it cheating when you're checking your hive to stick your finger in some honeycomb and taste it, see if you like what they're making? Oh yeah, I do that a lot, especially when they when they do um, the uh, burr comb on top in their honey. And we rip it apart or whatever, and it's like, oh, oh I, I did that last year. Remember, guys, at the was it the retreat, and I about barfed because I took <laughs> such a big mouthful. I was like, oh my gosh! So, but I got it on my knife and it went like this, and it was a big old chunk, and it was a, it just kept getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> I do that a lot, and that's how you can also tell what's what's flowing, or you know, if you catch it early enough is by tasting it. Absolutely. Do any of you have any experience with uncapping with a heat gun? Um, I did do that one time and it works very well. Um, it's not messy. Um, no, you're going to do it over uh, your, your capping tank anyway. So it just mm. runs right down, but um, I didn't like it because it heated up my honey, you know, the top part. So I just, I did try it. I forgot about doing that until you said that, but yeah, I, I did try it for a couple of times. 
I tried. I, the, I saw a couple videos. Uh huh. Yeah. I tried the knife last year, and I I didn't like it either. I won it at one of the B meetings we had. I was like, oh, that you got to pick what you wanted. I'm like, oh, I want that knife, the heated <laughs> knife. And I was like you. It had so like it wasn't thick enough. So when you did it, you only got part of it. Mm -hmm. So I'm like you. Yeah, I mean, it the the idea of it was good, but mine wasn't thick enough. So it really yeah. it was kind of a waste of time. So I used. I actually got. Because when I went to help my friend, I learned a lot when I went and helped them that day. That was the Good. best learning experience. And they had the roller thing. Oh, uh -huh. to uncap it? Oh, yeah. Open the I love that. I love that. And then if you, if for some reason you can't get it with that, then they had the fork thing. But I love that roller thing. It was so much better than that hot knife. Hot and all knife. it does, it has teeth in it and it just opens up each cell, right? Yeah. 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 Is it only like two wide, two cells wide? about that one it's about oh you must have a different one than me mine's just a tiny little thing hmm well if you like it invest in a bigger one so I've yeah seen I've, not, I've not got to experience any kind of honey processing yet oh so gotcha okay. hopefully this year yes. mm -hmm. i have the hot knife and then i have the serrated but it's got like a it turns up on the corner it's made for decapping mm -hmm. so i go between both of them hmm <laughs> Hmm. Okay, at our B meeting the other night, we always do raffles and uh -huh. it raises money for the club. But um, then you go to the table, you pick which item you want. This guy, after you we were done, I'm like, what did you get? And I, I have no, he didn't even know what it was. And nobody, nobody knew what it was. I don't know, like the people who got it, the president or whatever. She was talking to somebody, but it was, it was on a handle, like say, here's the handle, but it was a thick handle. Now you can see this. And then it was, it was square and it had, it was at an angle, like, I don't know how to explain it. Like up here was the square, but it was, but it, but the top part came down like this and had teeth. And then there was a bottom part that came up like this, that was solid and sharp. So this oh, solid, it's a decapper. but how does it work? Because it looks like the teeth are at the same angle as the knife. So if you would scrape it, is that what you do? You just, you just pull it? it down, right, Debbie? I've seen it, and then it has a real long. Yeah, it, you pull it down. Yeah, so they do you, came out really heavy last year. So you pull it with the teeth, and then so does it go on that other slanted solid part? And that's yeah, it, it comes like this, and, and it comes out this way. The cappings come out. Okay. Uh, we couldn't figure it out. I'm like, it looks like a decapper of some kind, uh -huh. but I'm not really sure. It, does it yeah. work well? I don't know. It it does on Facebook. No. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So I'll have to find a, a video and and uh, post it. But yeah, that because I almost bought one and then now I don't need one. So because I have my decapper, but yeah. Pretty cool. They make it look very easy. <laughs>